would like to say good evening to everyone and thank you for joining another lecture given by the Southfield Michigan branch. My name is Felicia Hamilton. I will be your host and your moderator for this session. Welcome to another lecture given by the Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Southfield Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The president is Dr. Edward Ewell and the vice president is Dr. Ronald Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given into salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name 
and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary aims and constitutional objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. And our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by Dr. Mary Steele, followed by a scripture reading, which will be 2 Timothy, the second chapter, read by Dr. Paula Brown. Hello, this is Mary Steele, and uh, let us follow our hearts and minds in a prayer um, for um, everyone who's dealing with this uh, COVID situation and things going on in our personal lives, it's good to be able to uh, learn more about it. Uh, um, with these few words, I say, hallelujah. 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 She's coming back in now. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. I do apologize. I, I kind of knew it. Um, the scripture lesson, what is it again, please? Second Timothy, second chapter. Got technical issues going on. <sighs> The second Timothy, Timothy, the second chapter. Correct. And I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible. Second Timothy, second chapter. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahshua the Messiah. 
and the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. No man that warrants entangles himself with the affairs of this world. Did we lose you, Paula? No, excuse me. I'm up here um, trying to um, cut this other device off. Excuse me. No man that wars, thank you very much. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this work of his life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strives lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and Yahweh give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua the Messiah of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my evangel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bound, bounds. But the word of Yahweh is not bound. Therefore, I adore all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Yahshua the Messiah, the eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth, abideth faithfully. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before Yahweh that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more unrighteousness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hemus and Pythus, if I'm saying it correctly, who concerning the truth hath erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure, having this seal, Yahweh knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that name, nameth the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and to some dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and suitable for the master's use and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that call on Yahweh out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do ginger strife. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, that apt to teach patience in meekness, instructing those that are opposed. Perhaps Yahweh will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and they may recover themselves out of the snare of the adversary, who are taken captive by him at his will. That was Second Timothy, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for the scripture reading and Dr. Mary Steele for the prayer. Enjoyed that. And once again, we'd like to say good evening to everyone and welcome to all our brethren, our visitors and friends. We welcome you and we really do hope you enjoy the lecture. Today is our Green Chart Thursday day. And we are very happy to have presenting for us today, um, Dr. Sharon Lewis of the Southfield, Michigan branch.
Dr. Lewis will be uh, doing her discourse on the circle of Willis um, that is in the human brain. So Dr. Lewis, anytime you're ready. Hi, I would like to say good evening to the class. And uh, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to be able to say anything regarding our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And uh, I am presenting this, I ask Yahweh to give me an increase or an understanding. And I found out in looking at this uh, particular topic, criteria circle of Willis, is that for me, it was very um, complicated, I might say. Um, it's very hard to understand because of all the medical terms. And as I pondered how to do it and you know what words to say and how do I get this understanding, then I heard within myself, the Yahshua says, just rely on him. He'll give you what you need to say. Hopefully it will be to the edification of those that are listening. Um, you know, but what it did for me is I've always been very um, interested in this particular uh, picture on this chart. It always interested me is because there was a stick figure of a man. And I thought that was just an awesome thing, what Yahweh has done. And so this green chart in itself is, how do I get rid of this? Just one second. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, this green, uh, I'm dealing with this computer, I don't really know how to do it, but um, this green chart to me is, is very, very uh, special. And it's um, a lot of things on it, if you just take the time to look at it. And uh, I like the title, especially the creator image by his creation. And so then we have on top of the word creator, then you have Yahweh, which we know that Yahweh is the creator, source and substance, substance of all things. And Yahweh created everything, both physical and um, invisible, ver both, um, how does it say, animated or inanimated. Yahweh created it all. Elohim is the image seen only in divine visions and revelations he says super incorporeal form of Yahweh. See, Yahweh takes on that super incorporeal form as Elohim. And we come to understand through this teaching is that Elohim can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. And then on top of his creation is Joshua the Messiah. Our creation is Joshua the Messiah. You know, Yahweh was Yahshua the Messiah was Yahweh manifested in the flesh or his creation. So the whole chart, starting from the name itself, displays what it is that Yahweh came in to do. Now, to me, this green chart is simply reflecting uh, a Romans 1, 19 and 20. If somebody can get that for me and read it. I don't have a lot of scriptures to call, but, uh, you know, I do want to have some, I do have some jotted down that I want to refer to. So if you can get Romans 1, 19 and 20. That's Romans 1, 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse. Okay, so everything, all the invisible things, everything that's ever been created are clearly seen by the things that are made. And that's how Yahweh has chosen to allow us to have an understanding about him. And saying that it is because Yahweh is spirit. He's incomprehensible, inscrutable. So his divine nature is manifested in the physical form, if you would, you know, and that's what we are seeing in all things. Our physical bodies are made from Yahweh. Uh, the scripture talks about that he formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. So when we speak of the physical body, the components in the body, 
the parts of the physical body, we can compare them with the structure of the tabernacle, which we come to understand that the tabernacle that was constructed in the wilderness is the tabernacle of all things. It's a pattern of all things. So everything conforms to that tabernacle pattern and to the structure of what Yahweh is displaying about himself, his nature, you see. So it's stated in the Elohim book also, when I was reading that, that all things, and I'll just paraphrase it pretty much, that all things of the tabernacle and our physical body point to the Messiah or Yahweh, for he is the fulfillment of it all. So when we're speaking about physical things or the physical body, we have to keep in mind that it's pertaining to spiritual things within Yahweh's purpose. So again, Romans 1, 19 and 20 takes the natural things to understand the spiritual things. So those things that we may have questions about that we physically see, try to look at it from the, our, our, excuse me, the spiritual things that we don't understand. Try to look at the spiritual reflection of, the physical reflection of that to understand it because he created the physical to point to the spirit. Okay, um, with that in mind, I'll just go ahead and try to get to the actual topic. Um, the arterial circle of Willis, uh, I wanna start off by talking about the tabernacle. If you can pull for me the tabernacle chart and the function of the high priest on the day of atonement. And the reason being is because Dr. Kinley mentioned in the textbook, and I'm gonna have you read that a little later, but he had mentioned about that that was reflecting uh, operation of the Holy Spirit, talking about this arterial circus of Willis. The high priest was appointed by Yahweh to service the tabernacle. He actually had the responsibility or was in charge of that tabernacle as well as the temple. And he had to be whole. And if you can get for me Leviticus 21 and 6, because the high priest could not have any physical um, uh, defects and he had to be holy in his conduct. So in Leviticus 21 and six, and then drop down to the 17th verse, it states this. Go ahead and read that if you would, please. Yes, Leviticus 21 and six. Mm -hmm. They shall be holy unto their L and not profane the name of their L for the offerings of Yahweh made by fire and the bread of their Elohim, they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. Okay, let me drop down to the 17th verse, please. Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that have any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his Elohim. So in other words, the high priest could not have any blemish. He couldn't approach into the most holy place. He had to be without spot and blemish. Now, keep in mind, as I'm speaking this, these are points. If you listen carefully, because this points is going to uh, make us understand a little bit better about this arterial circus of Willis. For me, I had to look at the tabernacle first, look at the function that Yahweh had the high priest doing, what all that was about in order to see how the arterial circle of Willis functions. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, also now, can you go to, um, I sent you, Felicia, a picture of the high priest. If yes, you, you did. Okay, if you can bring that up. And I thought this, I got this picture off of Lansing's website. Yes. And yeah. I thought it was really good, you know, because it, it just identified a whole lot, you know. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the high priest who had to officiate, and if you can recall, the high priest had a, uh, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but, you know, they had a, he, he was a temporary function, if you would. I think he started at 20 and his term ended when he turned 50. So 30 years or so he had to operate. The high priest had to be a Levite of the tribe of the Levite, if you would. Now, in order for him to officiate in the tabernacle, and I'm going to talk specifically about going into the Day of Atonement, which was October the 10th. The high priest had to change his garments and he had to, he wore special garments 
before or prior to entering the most holy place or the holy holies of holies. Now this is garments of beauty and glory. And when you see this uh, in living color, <laughs> if you would, I know on the website, it comes up really, really clear and the colors are really pretty. You can see what they were trying to represent garments of beauty and glory. The high priest wore ephon, which was, um, it was an, an intricate vest, if you would, um, the vest that you see there. It held two onyx stones on each shoulder. Each of those stones had six names engraved on which were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And the high priest also wore a mitre or a turban with a gold plate, which had the words holiness to Yahweh. Now we've been told oftentimes in this school that those um, um, stones engraved on the high priest's shoulder was uh, representative of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel or um, Yahweh or the high priest or Yahweh, Yahshua the Messiah, the high priest presenting themselves to Yahweh, you see. So the high priest had bells on the hem of his garment. I don't know if you can go down further, which I thought was very interesting because when you look this up on the internet, uh, some of the internets talked about they have no idea why he specifically wore the bells on the garments. They were bells and promagots, if you would. And, uh, and they says, and maybe it was because he did something wrong. Well, we understand through by this divine vision and revelation is that he had to officiate airlessly in that most holy place or Yahweh would kill him. So he had to be anointed with the holy cup of anointing oil. But those bells were placed on that garment. And if the high priest did not come back out of that uh, uh, most holy place, then they would have to have, I don't know, I can't recall if it was flesh hooks or what, to pull him out of there because nobody could go into that, nobody could go into that most holy place. If so if there was an error that was made. So they would have to pull him out by some means, you see. So um, he had to the, the, keep in mind what I'm trying to establish here. Very, very specific, no errors. He's going into the holy of holies. Now we understand through by this vision, what I'm gonna talk about, there are two circles of Willis and the operation, but it's in our brain. And our brain is in relation, if we look at the, um, uh, the tabernacle itself, our brain is reflecting that most holy place. Can't be no errors there. You see the principle that I'm trying to establish. Thank you. I was just ready to ask you for the tabernacle chart. So the high priest had to go into the most holy place. When you look at it, most holy place, and it correlates with the most holy place of our physical body, which is the head. The holy place correlates with the the holy place in the tabernacle correlates with the chest region of the man's body. And the court roundabout correlates with the uh, abdominal region of the physical body. So the entire structure and function of this tabernacle could be correlated with the structure and function of the physical body. Now that is just amazing. To me, it just really, really is. So he had to go once a year on the Day of Atonement, October the 10th, the high priest had to go into the most holy place to make atonement for the children of Israel. Say, he had to go in making atonement is asking for the forgiveness of the children of Israel. He couldn't go in there without blood. He had to go into the most holy place with blood. The most holy place, and another word, when you pull it up on the internet, they call it a lot, the holiness of holies. And that contained three in one vessel, a three in one vessel, which we come to know, which was called the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was overlaid with pure gold inside and out. The Ark had a mercy seat of pure gold with two archangels of cherub cherubims, and they also was of gold. 
they were beaten out of one piece. It was a three in one configuration. If you are looking at the most holy place, that, config, that figure of the Ark of the Covenant. And they were overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings touching in the middle and their faces were facing one another. They weren't looking at each other. They were looking at the all seeing presence of Yahweh. <laughs> you know, you look at that and think they're just eyeballing each other, but they weren't. Now these two archangels represented Michael and Gabriel. Those were archangels that you know, Yahweh used for specific uh, purposes. One was a warrior, that was Michael. He was sent to carry out an action. And the other's function was to, to deliver messages, an example. Michael was the one that um, held the sword when back when Adam and Eve was taken out of the garden and for they could not come back in. Uh, he was the one in heaven that says Michael and his angels fought and the devil prevailed not. Gabriel was a messenger. He was the one that came to Miriam to tell her that she was with child. So you see the function, one is sending a message, one is carrying out an action. There also was a cloud dwelling between them and above the mercy seat. And this cloud that dwelled between them and above the mercy seat denoted the dwelling place of Yahweh. And there was a large eye that signified Yahweh's ever presence and the attention to the deeds of man. I think Dr. Kinley wrote that in his, in his Elohim book. Now this invisible presence of Yahweh was manifested, the invisible presence, remember you can't see Yahweh, but the invisible presence was manifested by the Shekinah on the day of atonement. Okay, so that's what they were looking for. As the high priest went into the most holy place, the low priests and all the congregation stood outside that tabernacle and waited to see that that's check and I flashed. And that way they knew that their sins were forgiven for another year. It's just, it's so pretty, it's unbelievable. So on the day of atonement, the high priest had to go into the most holy place and he had to take the blood of bullocks. I told you before, he couldn't go up there without blood. He had to take the blood of the bullock and he had to make a sin offering for the sins of himself, the sins of the children of Israel, and for the cleansing of the sanctuary. So his function was to sprinkle blood upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat seven times. That's in Leviticus 16, if you can get that for me quickly. You know, because a lot of times we just, we read it and we don't look at the scripture to say exactly how the scripture says it, you know. And in reading Leviticus, Leviticus is all the books of the Bible really is awesome, are awesome books, you know, but they were really, this, this, this teaching, all I can say is that it is truly a divine vision given directly from our creator. Dr. Kenley would not, no man could think of any of this to explain it by any means. So go ahead and read Leviticus 16. You want me to start at one? Leviticus 16 and 14, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is Leviticus 16 and 14. Mm -hmm. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Mm -hmm. You see, that was an operation that he had to do. So it looks like in a sense, like, what does that mean? What does all of that mean? It was by the dictates of Yahweh that he had them doing it. But all of the little finite intricacies of the operation of our physical body is going according to this. This is what's so astounding to me. You wouldn't think it. The doctors look at it all the time but they don't understand that it's going according to a pattern that was dictated by Yahweh. See, it's just amazing what we know. And it's not about patting, patting ourselves on the back by no means. What it does is make you humble when you start seeing these things that Yahweh is laying out to us. It's beautiful. 
So the high priest is acting as a mediator. He's going up there with blood. He's asking for the forgiveness of sin. He's going up there with the children of Israel, names written on his clothing, his stones, beautiful stones representing that. So he's acting as that mediator, if you will, between the children of Israel and Yahweh. Now this action on the day of atonement was the atoning for their sins. And Yahweh would then acknowledge it, like I said, by the flashing of the Shekinah, that he forgave the children of Israel sin for another year. And so essentially that meant they continued life, if you would. <laughs> he didn't kill them, you know. So let's look at the cranial now, or the physical body. The cranial or head cavity in the man's physical body, now that does, as I stated, corresponds with the most holy place of the tabernacle. Our brain and our body is the, hum the highest part of the human body. The brain is the foundation for the human body. There's a right and there's a left half of the brain. There's a midline in the brain and that right and left halves are called hemisphere. I'll talk about that a little later. And that's midline. And that is, um, it corresponds to see the right and the left halves of the brain and the midline corresponds with the two archangels and the two main functions corresponds with the duty of Michael and Gabriel in sending and receiving messages. So this brain, our brain is composed of gray and white matter that's likened into the cloud overshadowing the mercy seat. And by our brain, we are in touch with everything. So everything is in relation, or is handled all functions by the brain. Dr. Hamilton, if you can briefly go back to the green chart. Now in the Elohim book, the circle of Willis is referred to uh, as a, um, is stated as a um, unusual phenomenon that is not seen in any other area of the body. The circle of Willis got its name from a doctor named Thomas Willis, who discovered it in 1664. And it's so interesting because when I think of that, it makes me think that everything that's created, Yahweh, had, everything that is discovered, if you would, are found is already purposed by Yahweh. So it wasn't like the man founded or discovered the circus of Willis. It was always there and Yahweh revealed it to him. So that even the way that they talk about it, the, the Dr. Thomas Willis discovered the circus of Willis, you know, so through by his studies, then they said, ah, oh, you know, I came up with this and they start, you know, I see that this is phenomenal and it's makeup that's in our brain, you know, and, and, the, and the operation of it. When you look up, I had pulled up some of the uh, videos that they have online. There's so much online, it's unbelievable, but some of those videos, and it was awesome to see the actual um, brain, you know, and how they show the blood running through it and, and whatnot, it's, it's, it's just amazing. So it really made me think how Yahweh created everything in this physical, which is seen or unseen, visible, invisible, animate, inanimate, but it's to be revealed at his timing and to show that it reflects his pattern. So that's what this is all about. And so all, all of this points to the operation and purpose and plan of Yahweh. So if you can get for me figure one, uh, Dr. Hamilton. No, figure one, not this one, the other one, okay. So this circle of Willis is a junction of several important arteries. And you can see right looking at this chart right here, you know, you can see like this stick figure of a man. You can actually see it. I chose this particular one with a lot of different diagrams. This particular one was so clear showing that, you know, uh, it's just really pretty. Now it has, uh, the circle of Willis is a junction. That means everything comes together or stems off from this circle of Willis. Several important arteries at the base of the blood, which causes blood to flow from the front and back sections of the brain. Or the anterior, which means front or near, 
and the posterior, which means further back or near to the rear. So, you know, you see that a lot, the anterior or the posterior. The arteries are blood vessels that deliver oxygenated rich blood from the heart to the body. So that's what the purpose of your arteries. In our bodies, we have arteries and we have veins. You see, so those arteries are moving oxygenated blood and whatnot. So it provides, these arteries work to provide the arterial blood supply to the brain and its surrounding structure. So the surface of Willis is pro providing the arterial blood supply to the brain and all that surround it. The base of the brain is the lowest part and the base meaning rest or support or foundation. And even all that, you know, is pointing to Yahweh being our foundation and the source of all things operating within us. Now, the shape of the, the, shape of the circle of Willis is offers the, the, the one website that I was looking at. It said, excuse me, it said this actual shape the way that is shaped like a stick figure of a man, it offers the possibility of alternate routes for the blood flow, which are extremely essential for proper brain functioning. Now we know that. Because you should. Yes. I don't want to interrupt you. I know you. I know you got. You got. You got a schedule, and you're, you're going to. You, you, you don't want to be interrupted when you're speaking, but I just thought that might would be a little bit nice if you could get the definition to blood in the dictionary. Sure, if you can get the definition for blood. Did someone look that up? I have blood. Merrick from, um, I'm sorry, uh, Merriam Webster's Dictionary. The red liquid that circulates in the arteries and veins of humans and other vertebrate animals, carrying oxygen to and carbon dioxide from tissues of the body. Is that okay? Now, um, Pedro, remember also you wanted that definition. Remember in the scripture it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. See, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, see, because Yahshua the Messiah had to shed his precious blood. And that is the only way we have life. Let me see. So that circle of Willis, like I said, it, it does offer, what the website was saying is that it offers the possibility of an alternate route for blood flow. And we know the blood flow is extremely essential for proper brain functioning because the brain is the most sensitive organ which can be affected by, I'm gonna give you a word, is this, the uh, internet says by hypoxial, H-Y-P-O-X-I-A-L of, of the brain. Now, hypoxial is a condition, I'm bringing this out for a point, because it is a condition in which the brain is deprived of adequate oxygen at the tissue level. Hypoxia of the brain tissue that lasts longer than five to six minutes reverse, results in irreversible brain damage. Now we all know if you don't get brain uh, oxygen to that brain or blood flow through that brain, then sections of that brain dies. So it's irreversible. If you don't get that um, oxygen, adequate blood. Now remember the oxygen is in the blood. The blood is carrying oxygenated. Those arteries are carrying oxygenated blood. You see, so it needs to get, it's not like an oxygen tank up there, it's in the blood. That's where the life is at, in the flow, going through the flow of our brain. And if we don't have that oxygenated blood going through our arteries in the proper manner and way, and if it's, we're deprived of it more than five to six minutes, it does result in irreversible brain sure. damage. And that could be likened to strokes or, you know, what's the other one, the um, aneurysms and that type of thing. So 
I also got from the internet that the importance of the circle of Willis is it allows equalization of blood flow between the left and the right hemisphere. Remember, I told you that those two halves of your brain. So circular volus is very essential in making sure that every part of that brain gets what it needs. It allows circulation if parts of the brain is occluded. You know, in other words, that word means to stop or close up or if there's an obstruction at the opening or passage of that artery. And that again, is like having a stroke or an aneurysm. The circle of Willis serves as a backup or a bypass, allowing for an alternate route. If there is an occlusion in the normal right route of the supply to the area, I had to read that because it's, you know, I had to write that exactly what it was in the internet. And so it's like, here you have the circle of Willis. No, you can't, I know you're getting to it that this is representative of Yahweh. See, Yahshua. That's right. That's our life. Mm -hmm. See, he's displaying it right where it's supposed to be, where he is. You see, this is the, just bringing the thing right on out to what it is. That's what this is all about, where Yahweh is dwelling, what, how he operates. And this chart that you see, you have all of the different, so it was seven main arteries that um, makes up the uh, um, arterial circles of Willis. And I thought they were interesting, the right anterior cerebral artery. You know, when you read these, when you go through it, not being a medical student of no way, no wise, <laughs> you know, I can barely pronounce these words, is, is, is convoluted to me, but I just keep focusing on all of this is representing Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. It's representing what our creator has done. Right. So even, even when you look at it and you see uh, one uh, over there on the left side says right posterior communication artery. And you know, communication, that's sending messages. That's getting the point over if you would. So there's an artery that's communicating to other arteries. It's just amazing. I, I can do no justice in trying to explain this. I really can't feel very insufficient at it. But I just, like I said, keep bringing out the thought Yahweh keeps reminding me. This is reflecting him. There are things that we don't understand and won't understand on this side of, of the veil, if you would, in the flesh. We'll be learning in ages to come. But the little things that Yahweh has expressed, if you would, through the creation, because he is spirit. So he expresses his manifestation, what, who he is, what the makeup is, what was that tabernacle pattern, <laughs> excuse me, that covers so many chapters in Exodus. It's, it's all pointing to our savior. It's all pointing to this great creator that we know. We know this. We know Yahweh, and this is what he's telling us and revealing to us. So to continue on, let's see now. Okay, I was talking about the, uh, if you, if the, how the circle of Willis serves as a backup and that type of thing. Now, depending on the location of this uh, occlusion is what they call it in the Bible, in the, the, in the artery or where this um, uh, opening or passage is obstructed at, then that would determine what part of the body will be affected. For example, your motor skills, speaking, hearing, vision. So all of these that you see on this chart, right posterior communication, right posterior cerebral artery, all of these things that are listed. When you look in the book on Dr. Kinley, uh, I mean, what's written in this arterial circle of Willis in the Elohim book, all of those, the basilar, that's the one main one that they reference points to the high priest, for instance. But all of these things, um, yes, all of these things here is, is, a, is a, um, um, a function. Every last one of them have a function. It, the way it flows. And I was watching like a live example of this. It was a doctor that was explaining. It was very interesting actually. And uh, 
you know, it, it, it was just, you know, they're, they're talking in Greek, literally, because I didn't understand really much of it at all. But it was so phenomenal to see even the revelation of it that Yahweh has given to man you know, to be able to understand. Now we have brain surgeons and go in there and do a miracle on a defective brain, you know, functioning. You know, people who have tumors of the brain, cancer, or, you know, they got a artery that's disjointed or they have a twitch. That twitch is caused by one of these functions in the artery. See, something's happening in that brain, which is not allowing the physical body to operate uh, completely and whole, if you will, you see. So they have to go in and do the surgery. So all of this is representative of Yahweh. It's my whole point um, that I'm trying to get across. Um, so can you, uh, okay. So there are seven arteries of the blood vessels that come together. If you can go mm -hmm. to, um, okay, this, this chart is fine, I guess. Okay. These seven arteries, of the brain, of the blood vessels that come together in this unusual shape is what, you know, Dr. Kinley called it, and the circle of the circle of Willis and blood is distributed to the brain by the branches coming off of this circle. So you can really see that description there. The dis this distribution of the blood allows the brain to live and to testify to the high priest who had to sprinkle on the day of atonement when he went up to the uh, the most holy place. He had to sprinkle the blood seven times towards the mercy seat on the day of atonement so the children of Israel can live and have life. Now, this operation is also reflective of Yahshua the Messiah, who the scripture says the eternal spirit offered himself without spot. And seven denotes perfection. So without spot, without blemish, he offered himself to Yahweh to purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. And that's Hebrews 9 and 14. And you don't have to get that. So now, as stated earlier before, the seven arteries come together to form the circle. A circle means completeness or whole, just as the high priest had to be whole physically. If you recall, she read that scripture. He had to be without any physical defects. He had to be of a perfect um, um, attribute or per, um, his whole mannerism had to be perfect. No physical defects whatsoever. The, the high priest had to be anointed with the holy cup of anointing oil so that he would be able to operate airlessly and officiate in the tabernacle and the most holy place on the day of atonement. If you can go back to the, um, can't even think of the name of it. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hamilton. No worries. Mm -hmm. So remember the high priest also wore bells on the hem of his garment. And if a mistake was made, just to reiterate, then Yahweh would kill him on the spot. So now that's reflective in the brain and the blood flow necessary in, to function properly in the distribution from the arteries. There can't be any defects in this operation or errors or anything. It couldn't be anything for it to operate. Or there could be a possibility of death in the human body. So if it's not functioning, that's why the high priest, and you can really see how that high priest had to partake of that cup of holy Norton oil so that by the spirit, he can go in there and operate without making errors. Our physical body is reflective of that. That's just what I was just telling you. The duty of the high priest was essential to the livelihood of the children of Israel. The priest had to be obedient to this function at all times. And it had to continue. This function had to continue or it will cause death. So in the circle, Willis, if you can go back to the figure one again. So the circle, Willis, these arteries come together and they form a stick figure of a man with red blood circulating through them. And it's just so pretty to me. So Dr. Kenley states in the Elohim book also that this is a figure of a red man located within the gray and white matter of the brain. 
So this gray and white matter in the brain is likened to the cloud in the most holy place that we talked about between the wings of the cherubim and was the dwelling place of Yahweh. This red man is reflected in the scripture as Isaiah 63 and one, if you can get that. And as is mentioned in the Elohim book, it denotes that all men must have a vision of Elohim dwelling in the cloud or the brain within us. So instead of getting that scripture, just go ahead and pull up the Elohim book again, if you would, Dr. Hamilton, and read that bottom part under that description. I can see that you did a lot of writing on yours too. <laughs> we'll be taking okay. some notes, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is a uh, volume three, page 43. It's actually page 40, 42 and a half. Um, the diagram on the left displays a very unusual phenomenon that is not seen in any other area of the body. This is the arterial circle of Willis where seven arteries come together to form a circle. This state of affairs comes about in the following fashion. The two vertebral arteries located on either side of the spine unite into the basilar artery just as they enter the cranial cavity. The basilar artery when, then unites with the two posterior cerebral arteries and they with the two posterior communicating arteries. And these unite with the two middle cerebral arteries, which are connected in the front by the one anterior communicating artery. The three pairs of arteries, excluding the basilar, plus the one anterior communicating artery, seven in all, compromise, comprise the circle of Willis which distributes blood to the base of the brain. What does this all mean? Let us turn to the functions of the two low priests and the high priest in the tabernacle on the day of atonement, Leviticus 16 chapter. The two low priests represented by the two vertebral arteries could not go any further than the second veil in the holy place. They were not allowed in the most holy place, but the high priest represented by the basilar artery went into the most holy place alone and by himself just once a year on the day of atonement and sprinkled blood of the sacrificial animal toward the mercy seat seven times on three different occasions. Mm -hmm. Seven in the purpose and plan of Yahweh means perfection or completeness. And this operation was perfected. It was complete mm -hmm. in the tabernacle with the high priest. Likewise, it must be the same in our most holy place. That's what this is showing us. Go ahead and read. Therefore, the seven arteries come together in a circle. A circle represents completeness mm -hmm. to sprinkle or distribute blood to the base of the brain. Furthermore, these arteries form a stick figure of a man, and with the red blood circulating through them, this figure of a red man, located within the gray and white matter of the brain, the cloud, represents Elohim, who was crucified before the foundation of the world, Revelations 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. As the prophet Isaiah wrote, who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Bozrah, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, uh, apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fast? Isaiah 63, one and two. Uh -huh. Seeing that every man has such a figure of a man in his brain, is it not this mute testimony to the fact that one must have a vision of Elohim dwelling in the cloud, the brain within us? Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. I think that is so pretty. It is. Mm -hmm. you know, it is so pretty. So we, this is a vision now that we said we partaking of this vision that was given to Dr. Clinton. We have to have a vision too, as, as it was just stated in this paragraph. And this, this is representative of Elohim or that Shekinah, see, if you will. 
the vision of the Shekinah seen in the cloud in the most holy place of the tabernacle can be correlated with the configuration of these blood based vessels, which supply the brain, which take on the stick figure of a man, that shape and stick figure of a man, which is Elohim. So this stick figure, as is stated, testifies to the taking on and shape and form of Yahweh Elohim in the cloud or in our hearts and minds. So when we become spiritually enlightened to the point of knowing Yahweh Elohim as he really is and actually exists, then he takes on a definite shape and form within our minds and heart. I hope everyone understands that. This is it's literally an operation of Yahweh, yes. coming into an understanding of him. And so then therefore now you can say, I see, I understand that. Whereas before we couldn't, we didn't know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Yes. He didn't take on that shape and form. You know, we can say, we can see him now. I mean, that is what's so awesome. And I use the example of learning the moderation as a type of that, you know, and when I first started learning the moderation, it was so phenomenal to me and it was so long. And I always thought there's no way I can know this. And so what I did, I would practice it daily. I would practice it in my car. I would practice it sitting, just sitting down, reading it and practicing. So I used to work at this one place and uh, we had a conference room and everybody I worked for psychologists and and um, and social workers and uh, they left the office all the time to go visit clients and there was a conference room with a big board in it and this is just a digress it makes made me think of this how we see Yahweh and see and understand the things that he we're being taught in the school. And I would practice the moderation. Now, I didn't have charts there. I didn't have a cell phone at the time looking at it. And I had to rely on the vision in my brain, how the chart, I would, I would move my hand and I, it was like I was literally seeing the mm -hmm. chart. Mm -hmm. In pure spirit, taking on shape and form, I ran the chart and it wasn't a chart in front of me. Now, many of us say, the self same thing. This is what we have come to and are coming to. Yahweh is real in us. He's dwelling in our hearts and mind. It is not a small thing. It's wonderfully great. Say, right. It just yes. really is. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, you know, say that he's taken on that definite shape and form within our minds and our heart. Now, another thing is the seven blood vessels of the circle of Willis forms a circle at the top of the head. Uh, when you read the medical part of it, it says, it, 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 I think, or maybe this was out of the textbook. I can't remember where I got this from. It says it forms the circle at the top of the head, which is out of the, top of the textbook. It can be thought of as a crown worn upon the head. Now, what I'm saying here was I had to reread and reread this. The seven blood vessels that form the circle of Willis. And remember, this is the brain or the top of the head. Right. It can be thought of as a crown, if you would, that circle. Thought of as a crown upon the head, like the high priest who wore the mitre, which says holiness unto Yahweh on his head. So in the Elohim books, it states that our foreheads are broad bands, which when wrinkled, shows a type of writing. See, it's just, you know, like our whole physical makeup shows something. We didn't even know that we had the, the name of Yahweh right on our face. See, it's writing. Okay. Yahweh has written right within the man. Yes. So, it, so those blood vessels form together, that circle of Willis on the top of the head, it can be thought of as a crown worn upon the head like the high priest wore the mitre that says holiness unto Yahweh on his head. And our foreheads are broad bands, which when wrinkled shows a type of writing. And the circle of Willis is therefore our crown. You know, just like you're actually, we reflect with our physical body hanging on Yahweh, hanging on the cross. 
That's your scapular, your shoulder blades from your head on down. That's what I remember them telling us that when I first came into teaching. So we're reflecting his whole purpose right within our physical body. Get for me, 2 Timothy 4 and 8 is one of my favorite scriptures. Mm-hmm. I think talking about this crown worn on our heads, people, it brings tears to your eyes, literally. It does for me. No exaggeration what Yahweh has done. Go ahead and read that if you would. Mm-hmm. That's 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Mm-hmm. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown. Mm-hmm. Henceforth is laid up for us, mm-hmm. read, which Yahweh, mm-hmm. the righteous judge, mm-hmm. shall give me at that day. That's right. And not to me only, mm-hmm. but unto all them also that love his appearing. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now, people, let me tell you. So Yahweh was telling me when I was going through this, he has to appear to you. You have to see him. We have to see him. This is a physical reflection of something spiritual. He has to be in our heart and our mind. We have to see Yahweh. There's not a whole lot of time. That's why we have to pray to him to show us, show us and allow us to understand what this, what his purpose, what he did for us. So back to the brain. That's an organ that controls thought. Talk about this brain. It controls our thoughts, our memories. It controls emotions. You think about it. It controls thoughts. It controls touch. It handles our motor skills, allows us to be able to walk, pick up a pencil or a penny, that type of skill. It controls our vision, far vision, nearsighted vision. It controls our breathing. Did you know that the brain controls our body temperature, our hunger? It controls every process that regulates our body. And that compares beautifully to me with having Yahshua in our hearts and minds being our foundation. He's the base of our existence. He's controlling every aspect of our physical and spiritual life. So the circulation of the blood in our brain, in this arterial circles of Willis, the main component being the arterial circles of Willis, they say in the brain, because this is the direct flow of the blood from that arterial circus of Willis, where seven arteries, again, seven being perfection, comes together. That's what this is for. It comes together, the arterial circle. All of those arteries come together to form that, comes off of it, together in a unification to provide life-giving blood to the brain. That's makes me think so much of Yahshua. It's nothing, that's the only one that does that. He's causing us to live and to have our being. The high priest in the physical tabernacle points to Yahweh officiating in our hearts and minds. The the high priest, when he was out, that tabernacle was out there in that wilderness, it was a changeable priesthood in, in that he can only, he was only allowed to officiate for 30 years in the tabernacle. So Yahshua now being the high priest or the true high priest, He's after the order of Melchizedek. Yahshua Messiah was the high priest forevermore. There was no ending to his officiating, if you would. He has that unchangeable priesthood. He continues forever. But he's not, you don't need to offer daily sacrifices like the high priest had to. Once a year, he had to go up there with blood. Then they also had to offer those continual sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Yahshua Messiah was to offer his blood, his blood, his precious blood once through the sacrifice of himself, just once. Then it's just so, so amazing because we know that 
after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you know, Yahshua placed his spirit into the hearts and minds of mankind. So now that sac that one that was making the sacrifices in the, in the wilderness of Sinai, the high priest offering up daily sacrifices and so on and so forth, don't have to do that. Yahshua do not have to get back on the cross. So he don't have to do that. He's not going to do that. The most phenomenal part about all of this, and I'm concluding, I, I really don't have much more else to give. I think I mentioned that, you know, to Dr. Hamilton, you know, that when it's over, it's over. <laughs> but the final thing that I wanted to say is that in our physical body, that true tabernacle that Yahweh, when they, when they, was out there in the wilderness. And after they constructed this tabernacle in the wilderness, then when it was completed, when they reared up that tabernacle, then the cloud that led them out of the land of um, Egypt, you know, that, that cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of Yahweh, the scripture feels as in Exodus 40, the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Now that's reflective in our body. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton, of the true tabernacle that Yahweh will fill. Remember your body is, it says tabernacle is a, a temporary abode for the soul. If you look it up in the dictionary, the tabernacle or our body is a tabernacle. So Yahshua and Messiah, just like he filled that tabernacle in the wilderness, then he fills this tabernacle, our physical body. That's reflective of the true tabernacle that Yahweh will reveal after the knowledge and understanding of him is entered into our hearts and minds. In other words, Yah Yahweh will officiate in us, just like the high priest officiated in that tabernacle causing us to have a life, cause us to have certain deportment about ourselves, causing us to want to know him and to praise him. Yahshua died for us. He poured out that spirit. And if I can have Colossians 126, again, my favorite scripture, I want you to read that and read both of, well, I think it's 26 and 27. If you can go ahead and get that for me, please. And I'll be done. That's Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. Even the mystery which have, have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the, his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory. <laughs> Now she said the only hope of glory. Now in the scriptures, it does, is that your King James or your Scofield? I mean, holy name. It, it is the King James, but you know, I, I did yes. get it only right. from this period. And she did that only because that's what Dr. Kenley said. He adds the word only. He is our only hope of glory. So these mysteries have been revealed. And that mystery is the Messiah in us or in you, which is the only hope of glory. See, he's right within us. We do not have to look off to the stars and the moon and up in the sky. So you look at this chart here and it's the cere cerebral. This is what this is um, manifesting. I pulled that up, it's the cerebral. And it shows the, um, the circle of Willis. The two halves, you see that little instrument that's like, pulling it apart at the top to show the two halves of the brain, like we talk about the two halves of the brain. And um, those two halves of the brain are called the hemisphere. There's a right hemisphere, there's a left hemisphere. The word hemisphere itself means half of a sphere. sphere. A sphere it's a round, solid shape or a circle again. We keep coming back to that circle. Because Yahweh is the full circle of it all. He is complete. That's what a circle is, is completeness. 
So look at the word hemisphere here in relation to the arterial circle of Willis and the stick figure of a man. So it beautifully shows that he is here. Now that mystery, the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory. Now that's a spiritual principle, spiritual thought, if you would. The Messiah in you. How does he, how is he in you? Well, what Yahweh did is took the natural things to understand the spirit. Yahweh is spirit. How is he in you? So that natural way of looking, he's showing us this natural, physical, arterial circle of Willis that performs the functions of the high priest performed for taking the uh, uh, asking and pleading for the sins of the world and that cloud filling the tabernacle, showing that Yahweh, he filled that vessel. He fills you within your physical body by a knowledge and understanding. And let me tell you people, you will never be unfilled by Yahweh. See, because he fills you. Somebody knows what that scripture is over in Ephesians, where it talks about you're sealed. See, we've got something so great, a cloud of witness that Yahweh has done. And like I said, that scripture, Colossians 1, even the mystery, which has been hidden, we look to the sky for our Elohim. We were looking off somewhere. He says the mystery is him in you. So this is just a reflection that the scripture is true. He's in you. That's why you have to see the arterial circle of Willis in your most holy place, who is dwelling in your heart and mind, seeing the vision of Elohim fully and completely. He's operating. The part that I like so much about this was the fact that it had the, uh, uh, the ability to um, uh, uh, warn off strokes and stuff. It's this arterial circus, this man, the, the, the uh, real function of it. it. It can impede certain things that's going wrong in your brain. You see, it can divert the blood flow to go another part, if you would say. It's just beautiful. Yes. If I got just found it, what I had written, it serves as a backup or a bypass, allowing, allowing for an alternate route if there is something that's impeding that opening or that passage of that artery. It will route it so that you might live. See, and that's what Yahweh does. He is our life. So go ahead and read that scripture for me. I said, once he fills you, you are sealed. Now read what the scripture says. That's Ephesians 1 and 13. In whom ye also trust after that ye heard the word of truth, the glad tidings of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, if ye were sealed, excuse me, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you heard it. You believed it. Did we hear this teaching? And I want to say something about that too. While I'm on it. <laughs> you know, don't depart from what you originally heard. That's right. We've seen that. This is the only truth. This is life unto us. Don't embark on anything else that sounds greater. There is nothing greater. That's why he's having me lately. I want to read it directly what the scripture says. What did, was allowed to be in this Elohim book. See, Dr. Kenley said it better than any of us. He said it because he had the divine vision, you see. So don't depart from that which we have heard from the beginning and what Yahweh does, he brings these things back to your remembrance, that he's always operating in your most holy place. And don't have that other spirit up there. All you want is Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, on your most holy place. 
Because as it says, you heard it. What did you hear? The unadulterated gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, how he came in, died, buried, and resurrected. All the works that he came in to fulfill, all the ordinances, everything. He put us into a grace period. He fulfilled everything, and now we're in this period that we learn of him, unadulterated in our hearts and our minds. So we heard it, then we believed. He says, Yahweh, you did do it. How do you believe? You believe because he start placing his spirit in you. He gives you evidence upon evidence. We've had, we've seen so many things. We have we have seen so much in this gospel. And a lot of times I'll speak for myself in the weaker moments or whatever stupidity moments I call them sometimes, we have a tendency to forget. But what Yahweh is doing in these last prophetic seconds of this creation, he is bringing things back to our memory almost as soon as we forget them. And we saw the reflection of that in the scripture when he had uh, Peter was it? I can't remember now, you know, as we do forget um, about the baptism. And he said, and then I remember what Yahweh said. That's you see, right. see, he calls us to remember and you have, I'll tell you another thing that he's doing. He has comfort people. He brings, it's like a, um, it's like a um, comforting uh, blanket. He comforts us. He causes us and, and he is, Yahweh is Yahweh for all mankind. You see, so you see right within the creation, things of comfort that Yahweh has seen, that, that he has done for the earth plane. You see, we see it all the time. You see, so this is our creator. So we heard the gospel unadulterated, couldn't have heard nothing greater. We believed in it. We believed in it because he convinced us. He showed us proof upon proof upon proof. And after we believe, we are sealed. Is that what the scripture said? And when you're sealed, like a person who can goods, food and stuff, not vegetable, I never can. But they said once it's sealed, that seal, that canned good, that canned peaches or whatever will last for a long time because nothing can get in and nothing can get out. Now, there are those that have set under this doctrine and set under this teaching that embraced another doctrine, another uh, uh, thought process about Yahweh. And actually it was erroneous. We see that now. It was an erroneous doctrine. He said it will come. But let me tell you, let me tell you, understand this, they were never sealed. Because once you seal with an understanding of Yahshua, he's not, he's not taking that back. Now, that's, that's right. my understanding. That could that's be, right. you know, somebody knows something better than share that with me because I want to know the truth of Yahweh and his operation. So I hope someone got something out a little clearer of the arterial circle of Willis. I didn't go all the way down to the spinal cord and all that. It was like, a real, uh, like I said, literally for me, it was a very hard. It was a, it was a hard. Um, it was harder than what I thought because I, I just couldn't grasp the meaning of all these words. But I hope I did some justice in trying to show that it was already done. You know, that's going according to the tabernacle. It's going according to how Yahweh has re is reflecting Himself in the physical body, this physical understanding of something spiritual. You see, Yahshua the Messiah is our high priest. That's one last thing, I'm sorry, I forgot. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, I think it is. That's, that's the last thing that I wanted to say because he is the high priest. The function of this high priest in the tabernacle was essential. It was mandatory, it was required. It was, the, he had to fulfill this function to a jot and to a tittle. This is representing Yahshua the Messiah. 
So I think it was, I think if you start, I don't have my book actually, but I think if you uh, start at um, the end of the seventh chapter of Hebrews, I think it is. You want the end of the seventh chapter of Hebrews or Hebrews 9 and 11? Talking about the high priest. Uh, no, it's, um, okay. let me just see. I can see if I can get it here. Uh, or was it six? Okay, do you want 711 in regards to Hebrews 711? Talking about Melchizedek and the Levitical priesthood? No, I covered no. that. He's after the order of Melchizedek. Just start at eight and one then. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. seven and so the seven chapter is talking about, like she said, Dr. Uh, Paula said, is that it's after the order of Melchizedek and it talks about that priest who... Uh, Yashua Messiah comes in after that order because Melchizedek was a high priest that had no beginning and no ending. He had no known parents. Like Yashua Messiah has no physical parents. has no beginning, no ending. So he was after the order of Melchizedek and not after, you know, the other priesthoods or the Aaronite, I think, priesthood, you know. So he all the other priests was a priesthood being changed. So then therefore, Yahshua Messiah has to come in with an unchangeable priesthood. In other words, there was no 30 year reign for him only. See, he's after the order of Melchizedek forevermore. I hope that wasn't too jumbled, but go ahead and read the eighth chapter. Hebrew, Hebrews eight. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paula. Start at, I just found what I wanted. Start okay. at 7 and 27. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, start at 23. <laughs> Thank okay. you for running. Mm -hmm. 7 and 23. Mm -hmm. And they truly were many priests. And right. They were, okay, I don't like it. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Mm hmm but this man, because he continues ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Talking about Yahshua. Right? Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto Yahweh by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself so all those sacrifices all the priests function was pointing to yashua you know and that's another way you see it so clearly even thinking about what operates and how it operates in our brain. It's pointing to Yahshua. Go ahead and read. For the law maketh man high priests, which have infirmities, but the word of Yahweh, excuse me, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Mm -hmm. He is consecrated forevermore. Talking about the man, Yahshua Messiah, who came in in the likeness of sinful flesh. But he was truly Yahweh who stepped into that body. That's who he was. You know, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, these three are one. So go ahead and read 8 and 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. That true tabernacle is your physical body, the earth plane. See, that's the true tabernacle, read. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is the necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. So that's enough of that, Dr. Mm -hmm. Paula. Mm -hmm. So that basically concludes what I had to say.
the Messiah in us is our hope of glory. I hope somebody got something out of the arterial circle of Willis to see how it relates to the function in the tabernacle and the high priest, how the seriousness of it and our physical body is representative of having Yahweh in our hearts and minds, and that he is truly uh, the one that allows our blood, his blood is flowing for folk flawlessly for us and he's allowed for that functioning to go on and without that showing forth the stick figure of a man or Elohim then we could not have life so I hope somebody got something out of it with these words I thank you hallelujah hallelujah so much Dr. Lewis I really enjoyed that and I I am so very grateful that you were honest and saying that you know you didn't really know what to say and you know the medical terms were confusing to you because what we want to remember is that it's Yahweh that gives us the increase it Yahweh it's Yahweh that will bring those words back to our remembrance and then right. Dr. Brown if you can get uh, um, um, the comforter which is the Holy Spirit give me that and then um, I'll get another scripture. But it's it's relying on Yahweh because I, I often do that all the time when I want there's something I want to say I'll 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 think about and read and think and keep thinking and keep thinking and keep thinking about what I want to say when all I have to do is rely on Yahweh or the Holy Spirit in me to do the talking. So if you could get that for me, Doctor Brown, please. Yes, that's John fourteen and twenty six. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Absolutely. Peace, Keep going. peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. That's right. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, you can you can pause right there. Mm -hmm. So what you know during Dr. Lewis's uh, dissertation, what I noticed was that she learned some new things. She learned new medical terms, but what Yahweh did and what He continues to do for all of us, He brought back to her remembrance what she studied and what she learned under this gospel, under this great vision about that high priest and his role in that tabernacle. Right. And he took what she already, what he had already told her, I don't know how many times, and he allowed her to relate it to the human body. And that's what Yahweh does. That's why it's not, and I'm speaking to me, it's not difficult. Learn, lean on what Yahweh has already taught you. He taught you that the tabernacle pattern is threefold. He taught you that there's a court round about a holy place and a most holy place. He taught you those things. And she talked about those two archangels representing the two hemispheres, one with motor, one is sensory. He taught her that, but he brought back to her remembrance when she was, you know, kind of a little bit um, weary or leery about doing this. Well, wait a minute, you know this, right? So then you know this. It's just a matter of leaning onto Yahshua and not leaning onto our own understanding so that we can get a better understanding of everything that Yahweh's made or the Romans 1, 19 and 20, if you could get that for me, Dr. Brown. But before she gets that, remember, um, uh, it was said in Luke, and I think it's also in Mark, uh, Mark 13. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that ye speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. And so that was one of the first things Dr. Lewis talked about. She said, you know, I was so leery about it. And that may not be the word, but she said, you know, I just, I didn't know what I was going to say. And she said, Dr. Yahweh told her, <laughs> I do the talking, you know, pretty much. And that's what we have to remember. So I, I applaud the Holy Spirit in her for allowing her to go ahead and touch on a subject like she said, with all the medical terms that if you don't know medical terminology, they are, they can be very daunting. They can be 
very intimidating. But he allowed her to go through that because he made it simple for her. And that's what he does for all of us with everything. Yahweh will make it simple if it's in your heart desire to know. So uh, get that one scripture for me, Dr. Brown. And I want to uh, point something out that Dr. Lewis had on one of her charts. Okay, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Yes, ma'am. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest. So pause. So everything that can be known of Yahweh, that's why I love this chart. It's my second favorite. My first is the tabernacle. But it's my second favorite because I love all things science. So what Yahweh is saying in this scripture, everything that can be known of him, go ahead, is manifest in them. He's already manifested it in us. And she talked about how your entire body is manifesting Yahweh. Go ahead. For Yahweh had showed them unto them. He's shown it unto us. He showed unto her with, with the operation and the repetitiveness of going through this tabernacle pattern. He allowed that to be seared in her. And that way she was able to take that circle of willows and relate it to that pattern, that tab tabernacle pattern. Keep reading, Dr. Brown. For the invisible things of him from mm -hmm. the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things of Yahweh are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made. Yes. Even, even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse. Absolutely beautiful. So he, and like she says, she went into the creator, which is Yahweh, imaged or the image of Yahweh is Elohim by his creation, which is Yahshua. Everything in the universe is the creation of Yahweh Elohim. So because he made everything in the universe to reflect who he is, there is nothing that doesn't go by this pattern. If you know this pattern, then you can take everything in the universe and relate it to that pattern and learn about your heavenly father. Now, Dr. Lewis um, had, she gave me a couple of our diagrams. Um, yeah, we did look at all of them. But what I thought was interesting when I was looking at this one was you see the arterial circle of Willis, but you also see this H here. Now they have it kind of looking like an X, but that's not what that is. So Yahweh had me while she was talking, go back in my textbook because you, you, everything you want to know is pretty much answered in the textbook. And it's on page 21 and a half because the pages with pictures don't have um, numbers. So I'm going to just read a little bit and talking about this because remember, he talked about, she, she had it read where this arterial circle of Willis represented that high priest going into the most holy place and sprinkling that blood on that tabernacle. He had to do it three times, three times, seven times each. That is our intercessor. He's the intercessor for us. But we have this H appearing here and it talks about this in the textbook and I'm going to read it. And like I said, it's volume three, page 21 and a half, if anyone uh, wants to get it. But I want to leave this picture up so you can kind of get a feel for what they're talking about. So um, it says the two diagrams, I'm not going to do that. So the tree, the tree-like branchings in the cerebrum are called the arpa vitae, which means tree of life. Now we've seen that and I think we do have it on the green chart. So let me get that really quickly so we can see that. So see here, let's bring it up mm -hmm. more. See here where it says arbor vitae, arbor vitae or tree of life. So imagine that because remember this is the base of the brain. So imagine this, your eyes are here. So it's almost like you're looking up in the sky. This will give you a little bit of orientation on what you're looking at. It's almost like you're looking up at the sky and this would be the, t you know, the top of your brain or the um, post uh, anterior and this is the bottom or the back where the spinal cord is. So the diagram that Dr. Lewis had has the H right in the back, right above the top of the spinal cord. So I'm going to read about that and Arbor Vitae or the tree of life. As the tree of life was located in the Garden of Eden, most holy place of the pattern, Therefore, man must have a similar structure in his cranial cavity or most holy place. This cerebellum has the function of coordinating the movements of the body. And when one understands that the tree of life represents Elohim, then it is easy to see that he, as the archetype original pattern, coordinates all things, both physical and spiritual, which have to do 
with the purpose and pattern and plan of Yahweh. The two hemispheres of the cerebellum are shown with the vermis situated between them. And we know vermis is, is worm or, you know, synonymous with that uh, satanic spirit. Uh, let me see, I lost my place. It's situated between them. So remember, if that if you have a coming together of the two hemispheres, yes, it does represent the two archangels, but it also represents your your man and your woman coming together. And then you have that vermis situated between them or that satanic spirit. These two hemispheres represent Adam and Eve. And the vermis, which means worm, represents the serpent who divided between the man and the woman by enticing the woman to partake of the forbidden fruit. Now, the cross section, that's here, the cross section of the, of the vertebral column with the spinal cord encased therein, the gray matter of the cord forms the letter H. And scientists have speculated as to why this is. We have previously explained that Yahweh the Father is pure spirit without any particular shape or form, typified by the cloud which led the children of Israel out of Egypt and which settled over Mount Sinai. Now remember, she talked about your brain being synonymous with that cloud that is in the most holy place over the Ark of the Covenant. So just think about that. So that's the cloud. Moses entered into this cloud when he ascended Mount Sinai and in a vision, he saw Elohim, a super incorporeal being which is the son of Yahweh. And later on, the son took on a fleshly manifestation as Yahshua the Messiah. The nervous system of man's physical body shows this threefold makeup of the Godhead. For the brain is the cloud, gray and white matter, which leads the man about from place to place. And the man is always under, under this cloud. The spinal cord, which represents the son of Yahweh or Elohim, proceeds out of the brain as the brain develops first in embryonic life. The H of the spinal cord, therefore, stands for holiness for Elohim. Holiness for Elohim was holy and pure. The high priest who operated in the Mosaic tabernacle had a miter that he wore on his head and across the front. It was a blue band with this inscription in gold, holiness to Yahweh. Isaiah also wrote of Elohim thusly, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. So you had to have a representation. She talked about how our, we have the name of Yahweh written in our face, but our entire body has Yahweh's name and representation in it. So not only do you have this arterial circle of Willis representing that high priest who was the intercession, who is representative of the true high priest, which is Yahshua the Messiah, but you also have a representation of Elohim or the, the holiness of holies right there with you telling you who this is. So when I'm looking at this picture, I'm like, I can see the H and to me, you know, maybe no one else sees that or yeah, we'll show it to someone else. It's pointing right to this one saying, this is the holy one. And so when you look at it, compare it to that tabernacle pattern, that is that holy one, Yahweh, in your tabernacle, in your most holy place. He has already done everything for you, as she said. He is the intercessor. The life of the flesh is in the blood. She talked about that. The oxygen is in the blood. That's your life. If you don't have oxygen in your blood, you die. That is your life. That that um, arterial circle of Willis and the way it has that blood growing through the brain, that is the representation of those seven times that priest had to sprinkle that blood on that altar seven times, three times, three different times, seven times each. So you had to have that representation of that seven or that completeness or that perfection in your most holy place because Yahweh is perfection itself. So just her going through that, it let me it gave me a, a, a sense of calm and peace to say that I have this. I'm the one that's doing it all. You don't have to do nothing. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't worry about trying to 
and press or to say the right thing. You lean on Yahweh, you, you go on what Yahweh has taught you, and that's his divine tabernacle pattern that he delivered it up, delivered to us through that divine vision of, of um, that he gave to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. You lean on that, and that will allow you to not only go through the arterial circle of Willis, it will allow you to go through the migration and atom, the cell, the metamorphosis of a butterfly, which I'm hoping to do for the next one, the seasons of the year, the universe itself, the man and the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, all going by that pattern. So once again, if you know that pattern, and that's what helped me understand that this plate should have been first because once you know this entire tabernacle pattern once you know about the structure and the function and Yahweh allows you to understand it then you can take everything on the 40 chart plate and place it on that pattern and you can see the death burial resurrection of Yahshua Messiah or Yahweh's purpose for us which is to allow us to know him as he really is and actually exists and allow us, his sons, to inherit eternal life. So I, I thought that was really pretty. I am very grateful that Yahweh put it in Dr. Lewis's heart to go ahead and go through it, even though, like she said, she's not fluid in medical terminology, but it's not about what she knows. It's about what Yahweh will speak through her. And because he allowed her to do that, my hope is that it was edifying to someone because it was definitely edifying to me. And um, I will stop and get off my little soapbox there. And I would like to open it up to anyone that has anything that they may want to add to what Dr. Lewis said or what I said or anything pertaining to this green chart. Feel free to unmute. what okay well for our uh speaker our next speaker do we have someone i thought i heard someone say something no okay for our next speaker we're happy to call on visiting with us from our brooklyn new york branch dr lenore allen the dean i think she's still on no did she drop yeah, I think she dropped off. I think she did. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, call on for our next speaker, uh, Dr. DeWine Nelson. Dr. Nelson? Good evening, class. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Fantastic. Good evening, class. Um, Good evening. It is a pleasure uh, to, uh, to be in attendance to class tonight and I was looking forward to uh, this topic since last week and uh, I was very edified um, by what uh, Dr. Lewis went through uh, in regards to um, in regards to the arterial circle of Willis and um, it's so it's so uh, it leaves me speechless sometimes because of uh, it's almost like um, we see this time and time again where we'll have some experiences, um, you know, in our in our own personal lives and things that we have that we, uh, and then we go to a class, the very, you know, the next class following, and it has, Yahweh has a way to show you the things that you had questions about or that you asked about. And it's related to the very topic, you know, uh, that you had already been engaged in, for, you know, and you almost sometimes you always say, well, did somebody, did somebody, did somebody who, who was tapping my phone or who, uh, how did they know? You know, uh, you get used to it after a while, but it really shows you that Yahweh is our Elohim. And that when we talked to, when we talked about that, Yahweh is Elohim and that he, we live, move and breathe and have our being within Yahweh. And then nothing escapes. You have no way. You're not. You're not separated from the pure spirit state of Yahweh. You're in it. You're immersed in it. It's immersed in you. And I think the more and more 
more and more as we come into the re uh, the realization of what that really means, what that really is, uh, it is just um, it just had leaves me in awe. I was uh, just real brief. I have a real brief testimony, and I as I know it's a uh, uh, time is up, but um, I had a conversation the other night, Tuesday night after class. Uh, friends of mine have podcast, and every once in a while I join in, and it's usually about hip hop. It's usually about music and that kind of thing and they have topics and uh, we had a friend of mine who uh, popped up on there and I hadn't heard from him years most of us guys we were all over 40 and you know we kind of you know you know just kind of ends up just being really a you know a session where we're just catching up and I, I, a gentleman came on that uh, uh, that I forgot had came to class many years ago as we used to we used to frequent me, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Atu Brazil. We all used to frequent the same circle, and so these were our friends at that time. You know, we are in young, our early twenties and things. And he had came to class a couple times, and he was one of those brothers who, who read a lot. You know, saying who read a lot, who wanted to, you know, uh, dibble dabble in this, dibble dabble in that. And um, so he got on uh, the podcast on Tuesday night. And he started talking, you know, everybody was asking where he's been and what he's been doing. And he's talked about the other podcast that he, you know, where he, where he has his knowledge, he called it his knowledge podcast. And it's so funny because the knowledge or the, the, uh, the knowledge of men is so vain and so vain continuously, uh, you know, just to show to puff him up. So he's one of the people who dives into everything. The world is from the world is not round to, you know, who the original Israelites were. And uh, I heard a new one that I had never heard before that um, Michael, the archangel, was actually Yahweh or he was Yahweh. They worshiped Michael, the archangel. It's a lot of things that I had never heard of before. And I was just so taken aback by all the different things because he, you know, I, you know, I was quiet, muted. It was a few people that was on this podcast and they were just so into, you know, uh, you know, and then he called my name. I was like, yeah, why? Well, you remember I went to your, you know, I went to your class, I went to a few of your classes, whatever. He talked about that pattern. He could, he, everything that he, the, you know, and gained to put in his mind over the last, you know, however many few years that he's been uh, doing his research, he remembered that pattern from way back when we were in our 20s. He said, one thing I can say about the class that Atu and Dewan's class, that's what they, everybody calls they our friends in that circle, Atu and Dewan's class, is they talk about this pattern that I, I've never, you know, no other thing that I've come across talks about it into that, into that detail. And I just thought about you know, even in the moderation, it talks about the threefold tabernacle pattern and then how we go forth to show proof that everything that's in existence goes according to this tabernacle pattern and that nothing escapes the pattern. And one of the things that was so impressive about, you know, when we go through these green chart days or whatever, when we go through these special topics, Oh, how all of it is tied, all of it is tied together. There's no separate subject over here or over here. It's all just one verse. It's all, it's all connected. It's all talking about Yahweh's pattern and his purpose. That's what it's talking about, all of it. Yahshua's fulfillment. All of that that we've learned over the course of our span of our, our lives in this school, uh, the Yahweh has caused us to learn, to know, and to understand something about it through uh, through revelation and the things that He's revealed to us is all testifying to Yahweh. See, so always testifying to our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. And so He went on and He went to talking. He went. To, he was. I mean, He was. I mean, He was coming, pulling some things down. I mean, it's so much stuff out there. Uh, sometimes you forget if you're not, you know, versed in it. We were in North Carolina and we went to the special lecture and we went over there where the restaurants and the shops were. And at some point, I think this was on the, uh, that Saturday, my mother and my sister and I, we were walking and they had a group of uh, guys that were on the side of the, uh, you know, inside the little uh, plaza and they had everything spread out. They had all these pamphlets and books and stuff spread out on the ground. They had their tripods up and their are their uh, iPads and everything, and they had their garbs on. I think these were the Black Israelites. 
and they were just, you know, just spewing out all of their rhetoric. People were stopping, passing by. I stopped to listen for a second to hear what they said. And it's just so much that the world is broken in darkness. And then we have the opportunity to know something about our Heavenly Father as he really is and actually exists. That is no small feat. When he talked about Yahweh, he literally plucked us out of the world. That is exactly what he did. He plucked us up out of the world. And the things that we, uh, uh, the things that uh, uh, that are in the world, uh, you know, that are having people groping in darkness, so is, um, is trem- at, a, at a tremendous state of peril. See what I'm saying? And they're in a situation that there's only Yahweh can come and get you from. And this is what he has done for us. He was talking about, you know, where, you know, what men, uh, what lineage and tribes that we were in. So I posed a question to him. I said, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, because it was a lot of went back and forth with a lot of different things. But I said, ultimately, at the end of the day, everything that you read, everything that you believe teaches that you have to take off this flesh which is kind of which you know uh kills me with the draw of witnesses because they believe that there's a new earth or a new heaven earth state and we're in these physical bodies in heaven but at the same time your physical body is steadily expiring if we haven't seen anything over the last couple of years you see i see the bell that these physical bodies do not last forever right you got these we got the the plague uh with COVID. uh you know what i'm saying we, we lost loved ones so you have to take off this flesh. So then what part do you have of this reimagined kingdom that's in, uh, when, once you take off the, when you take off the flesh, is it too late then? And he was talking about your lineages and, and all the different tribes. What, what does that have anything to do with once you rent the veil? So Yahweh is spirit. We come here to learn. We find out that our heavenly father says, Yahweh is spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So this is no longer, it's not about a physical, uh, a physical way of worship. The, the things that was given to Israel, that first covenant that was given to Israel was a type and a shadow. It never was about anything physical. It was a type and a shadow so that the creature that he made could have something to compare. And that's what we talk about. It's one of our theme songs. It takes the natural things to understand the spirit. So that he gave us these physical things so that we can understand something that is so much higher than these physical, these, this physical plane that we're on, these bodies and the things that he did when he set up and uh, when they instituted, when he instituted that, uh, uh, the purpose and starting that and starting that covenant. And then Yahshua the Messiah had already been, already been designated that he was going to, Yahweh was going to come in and take on shape and form in the form of salvation for his son. So now it's not about whether you're an Israelite, a Jew, or, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a Buddhist or a Methodist. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Then Paul talks about we that was once estranged, that were uh, um, that were alienated, that they had no part of the, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, they had no part of that reward or had no part of their salvation. Yahweh caused it to be a way that we had a way uh, to make which one was that once that was separated near connected again we talked about those branches of the trees and how it all branches off from the roots and those trees start to branch out how we're grafted in see by the salvation from the blood you talked about that blood felicia was talking about about that blood there's only one blood that was worth talking about one that's blood that was worth sharing that was the precious blood of yashua messiah that accomplished our salvation and so i'm just so happy that here i am i'm sitting in here in my living room, on my iPad with my feet up, and Yahweh is teaching us, going through his esoteric secrets, and that we don't have to grow up in darkness. There's so much confusion, There's so many, so many different things out there that are tainting the souls and the hearts and the minds of man to have people in darkness. And so I am so glad that it was nothing that we did, it was nothing that, you know, nothing in particular about any of us, but that we just won the lottery, y'all. We just got, we just got <laughs> blessed. We got with grace. And Yahshua <laughs> said, it's going to be you. And you learn something. Here you are sitting here learning something on a Thursday night in the comforts of your home about the Messiah, as he really is and actually is this. So I had, um, Yahweh has been working with all of us and showing us a lot of things. And I know that there'll be another time to go into some things. But for, to, for now, I just wanted to say peace in the minds of the Messiah. Thank you. 
for uh, going through. Uh, thank you for these topics, uh, and putting on these uh, these topics every other Thursdays, and the and the special um, the special lectures from Dr. Kenley every other Tuesdays. These things are just uh, amazing. Uh, the the jewels and the things that we have here, and I'm eternally grateful. Um, all praises to Yahshua. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Nelson. And that does conclude our uh, Green Chart Thursday for today. Our next one will be in two weeks, not next week, but in two weeks, which will be September the 16th. The topic is TBD to be determined. Um, as always, if there is anyone, someone uh, wants to go through anything um, regarding <laughs> the entire universe and how it goes about a pattern, please reach out. We would love to hear it and see what Yahweh has shown you. Share it with the body. We all need that nourishment. So um, that concludes our lecture. We are very happy that we had um, visiting brother and visiting with us. We really acknowledge your presence and we enjoy, always enjoy having you and seeing the brethren visit with us and visitors and uh, returning visitors. We hold our classes here every Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and on Sundays from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Now we'll have the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, before all time, now and forever, let us all say hallelujah. 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 That was Great wonderful. Class. Great, Great class. class. Great class. Wonderful class. Hey, I got a quick announcement.